Hello, Ritual family. I'm Dana Schmidt Johnson, your community manager of the Ritual Society and the House Astrologer. And today I'm so excited because we have a fellow Ritual Society member and passion project creator of my Adobe mission, Erin Mello. Erin, welcome to our discussion today. Thank you, Dana. So, Erin, you post about my Adobe mission quite frequently in the society, which is amazing. Tell us a little bit more about what my Adobe mission is. Certainly. Well, um, my Adobe mission is a passion project, as you said, of mine, where I am attempting to visually weave together the beautiful divination systems of astrology, tarot, the I Ching, Sabian symbols. And I have plans for connecting the dots between even more symbols, such as um, those in the tree of life and numerology and all of that. So that's in a nutshell what it's all about. I, I felt like there was a lack of visuals in terms of how all of these beautiful systems are connected. And so I, I started creating them. Um, and, and here we are. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit more about, especially for the, those who are unfamiliar with some of these um, divination systems, what all do you include and what are those different things? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, astrology, of course, is the study of how all of the planets and points are moving constantly around um, this geocentric view of um, us here on Earth and how the energies of and archetypes associated with those planets might be impacting us on a daily basis. Um, and so um, obviously that's a, a system that's gone and been in existence for thousands of years and, and people have um, long kind of studied that system of patterns really. And it, you know, I'm a big math nerd. So a lot of this came out of the fact that I am a huge math and data geek and astrology appeals to me in that it really is, you know, it's all these calculated points and, 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 and math and angles and relationships and repeating patterns, yet no moment is really exactly like any moment uh, uh, in the past or in the future. So um, it's a really interesting study of um, how, um, how energy works and impacts our daily lives. Um, and of course it has all these links to other systems that people have used both for divination as well as, um, just self-study or, um, predictive, uh, tools such as the tarot, which is, I know it drew, drew me to the society. So obviously this, uh, deck of 78 cards full of archetypes, all the major arcana cards in the tarot have links to astrology and that those major arcana cards are often associated with either a planet or a sign. And then of course there's relationships too between the minor arcanas and the court cards, which I've dove deep into as part of this project and how those relate back to astrology. Astrology is kind of the, the base. Um, Sabian symbols are when you get to the degree level of um, your chart. So when you're plotting your planets and points, your natal chart, if you've ever run your natal chart, um, all of your planets and points at the moment of your birth are sitting at a very specific degree and minute of a sign. Um, and of course, in a wheel, in a circle, there's 360 degrees. And so when you are looking at the degree level, um, there is this system of, um, Sabian symbols, which was um, channeled by a, a medium back in 1925, I think. So an astrologer and this medium woman got together and they put, I think, all 360 degrees on pieces of paper. And then she didn't know which one she was channeling about or reading for as he pulled these, these things out of a hat. I might be getting the specific details wrong. But, um, you know, she what she came up with were kind of just unique um, setting scenarios and pictures and images and you know things like a an eagle turning into a dove um you know a flag on a ship you know very interesting strange little symbols and so there's one for each of the 360 degrees and those sabian symbols um there's several people who study those and um, the relationship that those might have to your specific points is what what drew me in was 
you know, realizing that's one way to understand your, your chart points better. So, you know, you might want to start with your sun signs, Sabian symbol and learn about the themes of that symbol and how that might relate to how um, that planet or point expresses itself in your life. And then the I Ching, of course, is a, a the, it's called the Book of Changes. It's a ancient Chinese uh, divination system that's been a long, around possibly even longer than astrology. I don't know, I'm not a historian. <laughs> but uh, the I Ching is something I've been working with even before I got into astrology. I um, picked up this oracle deck from a friend, um, the Tao Oracle, if anybody wants just a very accessible um, visual reference oracle deck for the I Ching, that's certainly one I would recommend. Um, and it is composed of these six lines. So there's 64 hexagrams, each with six lines. It's these, hold this up a little bit, these little symbols there. Um, which are just combinations of yin and yang lines. So the yang lines are the solid lines, the yin lines are the broken lines. And so when you figure out how many permutations there are of those lines, you get 64. Um, and so people work with that system in, in many ways. A lot of people use coins to um, throw the changes. So figure you, you'll, you'll pull a hexagram, you'll learn about that, the themes of that hexagram, and then you might want to see what's changing. Um, and so you throw some coins or people have used sticks and there's all kinds of other methods that have been used for thousands of years. Uh, when I work with this deck, I just take three pennies and I use that to, to toss the changes, which is a fancy way of just figuring out which of those six lines, if any, might be changing. And if those lines change, then it changes that hexagram from one number to another. Um, so I've been working with that just kind of on a daily pull basis for a while. And then was fascinated when I started learning about my human design chart. So if anybody's familiar with human design, I think you guys have workshops on that as well. Um, but that human design system connects astrology, the I Ching. Um, it also connects kind of like the chakra system and, and other um, things like that. Um, when I realized that the gates in human design were what I'd been already working with, with these hexagrams, I was like, ah, mind blown. And uh, so, you know, that, and they have one way of connecting it. So there's so many ways to work with these systems and there's different methodologies and, and systems to connect them. But um, I've tried to take what's out there in terms of some of the more common links that people have made. So the links I make between the I Ching and astrology are the same that, that the human design system does as well. So. You know, if anybody's deep into their human design, um, that's the connection I'm trying to make visually as part of my interview mission. There is so much that is encompassed here. I feel like you would have to study for lifetimes to understand it all. How long have you been studying all of these things? Honestly, I'm... I'm actually quite a novice and I mean, I'm, I'm certainly not an astrologer for the last 20 years or anything. I've really only been studying these things deeply since really COVID time. So the last four years have been where I've gone real deep. Um, I'm a Sagittarius sun. Um, and I think that, you know, so higher learning and um, really, uh, you know, Op, you know, the eternal optimist, the ardent seeker of truth, holding faith, these are things that um, have always been kind of core to my being. But um, I think as is so common with people, um, I've had some major life changes since 2020. I think we all had some major life changes since 2020. And when those things happen, I think, um, well, at least for me, it, it steered me towards a more, uh, a deeper pursuit of these spiritual truths. Um, and um, so really only for the last few years have I been diving, diving deep. I've always had a fascination for all things esoteric. I've always been a data and math nerd. So um, I've always been fascinated by these things, but I, I really haven't gone deep in, uh, except in the last few years. That is so cool. It's, yeah, once we had the time in COVID, right, to be able to really dive deep and study these things, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so 
how did you realize that all of these could come together in a visual way? What prompted you to really create my Adobe Emission? Yeah, I mean, I had been kind of collecting a binder of, you know, my natal charts, which, you know, if anybody's looked at an astrology chart, seen many of your videos, you know, the circle chart with all the glyphs and things. I'd taken a couple of online courses with some astrologers that I really um, enjoyed listening to um, who offered courses to kind of get the 101s. And I'm printing all of this stuff out and I'm putting it in binders and I'm asking my friends and family for all of their birth details and putting it together. Um, I mean, it took, the learning curve is steep, you know, learning just the glyphs, I mean, it took a long time before I'm like, is that a planet glyph or a sign glyph? And I'm getting them all confused. Um, but then when I'm realizing, oh, I mean, obviously the tarot is visual in itself, right? And so that was a beautiful tool to, um, to start using and diving deeper. And then um, I, I know I got the beautiful artwork from the Ritual Society of those correspondences between the tarot and the, the astrology. And I'm like, oh, that's so beautiful. I'm like, but like, they were all kind of one off little, like, there's a visual here for this, there's a visual here for this that takes a lot to learn those astrology charts. Um, you know, the visuals for the I Ching, I mean, I had the Tao Oracle deck, but the, you know, the individual hexagrams, I wouldn't look at one and go, oh, that's 32. Like, what? <laughs> so, um, however, you know, in, in, this, in studying the I Ching deeper, I realized that, that set, those sets of six lines are actually two couples of three, right? So they're composed of two trigrams. And the trigrams are just simple, you know, there are eight, there's eight trigrams. There's mountain, there's earth, there's heaven, there's, um, I'm going to miss them all, thunder, you know, lake. Um, and so there's eight of those. And I was like, but there weren't any, other than just the, the three lines themselves, there weren't a lot of systems that were visually making it obvious when you look at the six together, you know, that this is lake above thunder, right? This is thunder above mountain, right? Um, I was like, well, let's create a simple visual for that, um, just to make it more recognizable when you're looking at one of the 64, what you're seeing. Um, so I, I did that for my own just helpful guide. Um, and then um, the Sabian symbols, there's this artist, Ruby Fumitsuki, I probably am butchering her last name. She's a Japanese artist um, and she's amazing. And she'd been, she'd put all of these pictures together um, that I'd been, um, I'd seen through James Burgess's website. He's one of the most world renowned astrologers on Sabian symbols. So I would follow his videos and his work. Um, and I was really moved by those pictures and, and wanting to connect the dots then between that and my chart. Um, you know, I just kind of started putting it all together, printing things out and then realizing that, wait, no, nothing's just mashing them all together. So I, create the assets myself and do it. So you did it. It didn't exist. So you did it for all of us. It's amazing. When you look at these charts, there is so much. So it's, you know, um, but you've also broken it down in a really um, a nicely visual way that I think to your point, it's very easy to consume all of this information by reading and long, you know, prose and texts and things, but uh, a lot of us are visual learners. So that's really, really helpful. I'm curious how my Adobe mission has helped you and others better understand yourself. Um, absolutely. I mean, that is the reason I, I started diving deep um, is, you know, when you, when you dive into any of the, the specifics of your natal chart, you know, you're, you're, diving into a, a specific aspect of your life and how it's related to, you know, a certain area of your life and how, you know, it, and I think also how unique that makes you compared to somebody else who would have their Venus in a completely different sign, for example. And so, you know, it's, it, it gives you an appreciation, not just for who you are and how you express things and how you, value certain things or, or may process information, but how others do that in a completely unique to them way as well. So it, you know, it makes you a better human when you realize that, wow, I might, might think of things this way, but not everybody else does. Right. And, oh, wow. It's so fascinating to see that 
you know, somebody else has their mercury in this sign, which is why they take a lot more time to like think through something or, or speak, speak their, um, their truth, you know, whereas, you know, I have my mercury conjunct my son. So it's like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and it's in Sagittarius. So I understand like, oh gosh, it might be hard for people to follow me if I don't, you know, intentionally slow down my words and, and, and break things down in a way that, um, you know, it doesn't go a mile a minute. So, you know, recognizing that in yourself helps you be a better communicator so that you can um, get your points across. Um, and, and, you know, a, a million other examples of life, life lessons that you can do if you're if you studying yourself. And of course, you know, changing yourself and figuring out how to, um, you know, communicate better, um, recognize what you value, you know, how, you know, what are, what are your true ambitions? And, and, and when you figure those things out about your life, then you can make the changes you need to, to become more happy in your, per, you know, in your journey. <laughs> so, um, you know, all we can control is ourselves. So I think it's really important to start with you. Uh, but it also is very fun to see the links between, um, between charts. So I, I mentioned I gather everybody's details all the time so I can um, find all these fun connections because, you know, it's amazing how, you know, in your network of friends and family, how there's some seemingly very serendipitous or, you know, uh, synchronicities between charts, right? So, oh my gosh, my uh, daughter's ascendant is my Jupiter to the exact degree, you know, and, and other just fun things that, you know, occur when you start comparing charts and um, helping you understand those relationships you have with, with people more deeply. Definitely. I like what you said about having, you know, we all have free will at the end of the day, right? So you, just because you have a chart doesn't mean that you can't make your own choices and um, shifts and, and grow, right? Yeah, it's, it's exactly that. It's a, it's a mechanism for self-growth because you're right, like it, nothing's preordained. I, I, I'm i not a big subscriber to like, oh, the astrology says this and therefore I'm doomed. Like, no, <laughs> right? Like, oh, this is gonna be a challenging time or this is a challenging aspect in my chart, which means, you know, I need to pull focus here and I need to learn what the lessons are for, um, for growth, so. Right, and there's often conflicting <laughs> things oh, in charts, that. right? Like, really great thing is going on in my chart and this also very challenging thing is happening at the same time so um, yes and figuring out how to navigate it all <laughs> amazing well Erin I know that you post frequently which is wonderful in the ritual society especially when there are um, big transits going on in the universe but where can other people find you in the meantime yeah, I'm, I'm probably most active on Instagram in terms of all the posts that I'll, I'll, I'll throw into the Ritual Society. You can find on Instagram at myadobemission.com. Myadobemission.com is the website, and at myadobemission is the Instagram handle. Um, I do have a Facebook account, too, but I really just cross-post from Instagram to there. So um, those are the, the primary places they can, they can find me. Perfect. We will be sure to follow you and you will be coming into the society to teach all about my Adobe mission in July. We cannot wait. Uh, anything else that you want people to know about my Adobe mission? Um, well, I'll go much more in detail in the workshop. I'll give you guys a background of, you know, why I launched my Adobe mission when I did. Um, spoiler alert, Pluto has a lot to do with it. <laughs> um, so I'll tell the, the mission launch story um, and I will dive deep into the intention behind all the iconography that I've created. Um, so every little border and, you know, color and shape and, and thing that that's gone into the different icons for the planets, the signs. Um, I will kind of give you guys a, a deep dive overview in the workshop of that. Um, yeah, and I just am really grateful for the, the opportunity to, to present this in more detail to, to the society. 
Yes, I am really excited about it. It's going to help everyone um, know a little bit more so that when you post, it's like, oh, I get it now. <laughs> I totally understand fun. that it's overwhelming. It's a lot of a lot of different pictures and symbols that, you know, could just seem like complete information overload without some tutorials. So I'm grateful for the opportunity to help help break it down into more manageable chunks for folks. Amazing. Well, I can't wait. And we will see you in the Society in July. Thanks so much for being here today, Erin. My pleasure.